This is Moonstalker at that place for walkthroughs with Medeb Kuzlin, Dragon Age Origins. At your service. I have some questions. Of course. What can a Templar do exactly? Essentially, they're trained to fight. The Chantry would tell you that the Templars exist simply to defend. But don't let them fool you. They're an army. The other main purpose for a Templar is, of course, to hunt mages. To that end, we train in talents that drain mana and disrupt spells. So could couldn't others learn these talents? Perhaps. But there usually isn't much of an opportunity. The Chantry keeps a close rein on its Templars. We are given lyrium to help develop our magic talents, you see. Which means we become addicted. And since the Chantry controls the lyrium trade with the dwarves, well, I'm sure you can put two and two together. That's horrible. I can't believe they do that. Well, they do it, and they feel perfectly justified. You don't need lyrium in order to learn the Templar talents. Lyrium just makes Templar's talents more effective. Or so I was told. Maybe it doesn't even do that. The Chantry usually doesn't let their Templars get away, either, so they can spread their secrets. I'm a bit of an exception. Lucky me. At your service. I have some questions. Of course. Can you teach others to be a Templar? Sure, I could. I could even teach you, I suppose. Anyone who's been trained as a warrior. I guess if I'm going to give up Chantry secrets, I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp, and I'll see what I can do. At your service. Have some questions. Of course. What changes about you after the joining? You mean other than becoming a Grey Warden? I mean, what changes physically? Hmm. You know, I asked Duncan this too, and all I got was, you'll see. Why, he wouldn't tell you? Oh, it's not that Duncan wants to keep it a secret, it's just that the Grey Wardens don't discuss it much. I gather it's not a pleasant topic. The first change I noticed was an increase in appetite. I used to get up in the middle of the night and raid the castle larder. I thought I was starving. I'd slurp down every dinner like it was my last, and <laughs> my face all covered in gravy. When I'd look up, the other Grey Wardens would stare, then laugh themselves to tears. I haven't felt anything like that. Really? Because I was watching you wolf down food the other day, and I thought, ooh, it's a good thing she gets a lot of exercise. Are you calling me a pig? Not at all. I've never seen a pig eat like that. Ever. <laughs> I jest, I jest, don't kill me. Oh, <laughs> and then there were the nightmares. Duncan said it was part of how we sense the darkspawn. We tap into their, well, I don't know what you call it, their group mind. And when we sleep, it's even worse. You learn to block it out after a while, but at first it's hard. It's supposed to be worse for those who join during a blight. How is it for you? Oh, nothing, nothing to get excited, excited about. Some people never have much trouble, but that's rare. Others have trouble sleeping their entire life. They're just more sensitive, I suppose. Everyone ends up the same, though. Once you reach a certain age, the real nightmares come. That's how a Grey Warden knows his time has come. This time, time has come. come? Oh, that's right. We never had time to tell you that part, did we? Well, in addition to all the other wonderful things about being a Grey Warden, you don't need to worry about dying from old age. You've got 30 years to live. Give or take. The taint. It's a death sentence. Ultimately, your body won't be able to take it. When the time comes, most Grey Wardens go to Orzammar and die in battle rather than waiting. It's tradition. Oh, sure. And you wondered why we kept the joining a secret from the new recruits. Well, there you have it. I understand. 
You know, Duncan... He started having the nightmares again. He told me that in private. He said it wouldn't be long before he'd go to Orzammar himself. I guess he got what he wanted. I just wish it had been something worthy of him. He will be remembered, Alistair. As will all the others. I know. Ending the blight should make this all worthwhile, right? I... Oh. Have I ever told you I really like the way you wear your hair? My hair? Really? You're so stubborn sometimes. It's very nice, and it suits you. Simple. Not like the elaborate hairstyles we wore in Orle. They involved flowers, ribbons, jewels. One year, feathers were all the rage, and Lady Elise decided she needed to outdo everyone else, and actually wore live songbirds in her voluminous hair. The chirping was quite charming for a while, but you must realize, terrified little birdies often have loose bowels. Dear Maker. Yes. You can imagine what she looked like by the end of the evening. <laughs> but I was trying to say something nice to you, wasn't I? Oh, forgive me. My mind wanders so. It's just that I... I feel so comfortable talking to you. Like I could say anything and you wouldn't judge me. And I actually do like the way you ramble. You see? This is what I mean. You're such a pleasure to talk to. I haven't felt this close to anyone in a long time. I really enjoy your company. And do you often enjoy the company of other women? And what would you do if I said I do? Very much so, in fact. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, well, I'm flattered that you like my company then. There's no one else I'd rather spend time with. Come then, let's get going. If I recall correctly, you have some important earth shattering business to attend to. Okay, let's see what that meant. Oh boy, she cares. Do you remember our discussion? What discussion? Remember, Medev's kind of a boorish sort of person. About Marjolaine and me, and my doubts about my path. I just wanted to tell you that I thought about what you told me, and you were right. I didn't want to admit it, even to myself, but those years in Lothering, I yearned for the freedom and the recklessness that I knew in Orlay. The Maker made the world beautiful, but he also made it dangerous. To really experience it, I have to embrace this, not not hide away in some nunnery. You're not meant for a place. You never were. Sometimes it takes another to show us the truths we hide from ourselves. Yes, yes. Let's not get all sappy here. Am I embarrassing you? Well, fine then. I don't really like you and you're a terrible friend. <laughs> terrible. I'm not glad I'm here. At all. <laughs> Who's this guy? Who are you? You're a hard woman to find. Where are my manners? The name is Levy. Levy Dryden. Did Duncan ever mention me? Levy of the coins? Levy the trader? I'm Medev. I've never heard of you. Really? He never told you of old Levy? We've known each other for years. But here I am carrying on while you have a blight to stop. Don't want to waste your time. Good. But you see, Duncan promised that together we'd look into something important for the Wardens. And for me, important. But poor Duncan's. Well, no more. A tragedy it is, at that. We well, I know he would want his work carried on. 
is pledge fulfilled. What promise did Duncan make you? How did you know Duncan? It's a bit of a tale, that is. But I'm the one who brought the Grey Wardens back to Ferelden. Well, I was one of the ones. There were a lot of us. Make us breath, I'm a bit nervous. Honoured to be here, really. Go ahead and tell your tale. Wait a minute. Must have been tricky. People seem suspicious of the wardens. And most folk are right fools. With a blight on the doorstep, we should be throwing virgins at your feet. <laughs> Although that could get a bit messy, couldn't it? <laughs> Go ahead and tell your tale. After King Marek freed us from the Orlesians, the Grey Wardens begged the King's permission to come into Ferelden, some sort of internal business. Me and a mess of other Warden sympathizers spoke on behalf of your order. Tan Logain was very much against letting Orlesian Wardens in the kingdom. But Marek, Andraste, bless him, was a fair-minded monarch, and he let them in. Go on, I'm listening. So that's why I was there when the Wardens and their leader, Genevieve, presented herself to the King. The first Wardens in Ferelden in over a century. Proudest state of my life, that was. Duncan was a bit of a scamp back then. <laughs> we were of an age and struck up a friendship. The King himself went with the Wardens on their mysterious business. When he returned, he rescinded King Aldland's decree, and the Wardens came back to Ferelden for good. Thank you for your part in bringing the Wardens here. Or actually... Duncan was an easy man to like. That he was. Thank, Thank you for your part in bringing them here. The Wardens, that is. Oh, his stomach's all a flutter. You're welcome. What promise did Duncan make to you? Well, as you know, my family's name is Mud around noble circles. My great-great-grandmother, Sophia Dryden, was the last Warden Commander of Ferelden back when the Wardens were known as Freeloaders. Really? So King Olin banished the Wardens, and he took House Dryden's land and titles. That bastard. What happened next? That's a bit drastic, isn't it? And then some. Not much is known about that time. After King Arlen died, there was a civil war, loads worse than this one. And our family was on the run, hunted by enemies, with nary a friend in the world. But Dryden's are tough. We rebuilt, became merchants, and we never lost our pride. So are you guys related to... Merrick? That'd be interesting to know. So what favor did you ask of Duncan? I asked for the truth. My family reveres Sophia Dryden. We know she died at the old Grey Warden base, Soldier's Peak. We want evidence to clear her name. It won't restore our land or our titles, but it'll restore our honor. I've never even heard of Soldier's Peak. Well, no one's been to Soldier's Peak since Ireland's days. At least none that's come back. I spent years mapping the maze of tunnels to the peak, and I found the way a few years back. So I went to Duncan, I did, and I said that he could reclaim the old base and my family could have its honor. Why didn't Duncan help you? Darkspawn surfaced in southern Ferelden, and Duncan got plenty busy recruiting new wardens and meeting with good King Caelan. Duncan said he would help after the Battle of Ostagar, Said there might be useful things at the peak, but he never had the chance. Your family's faith will be rewarded. I will help you. A thousand blessings <clears throat> upon you, Warden. I'll mark down the location on your map. When you arrive, we'll pick our way through the tunnels together. An adventure, do you want? Let's up. Ta da! Yes. Indeed. Indeed. Hmm. Yep. yep. But no. Nope.
Oh. Poop. Yes. Indeed. Indeed. I bring word, sire. There are demands from the Banorn that you step down from the Regency. They are said to be gathering their forces, as are your allies. It appears it will be civil war after all, despite the Darkspawn. Pity. I also have an interesting report. There seem to be Grey Wardens who survived Ostagar. How, I don't know but they will act against you. I have arranged for a, a solution with your leave. The Antivan Crows send their regards. An assassin. Against Grey Wardens, we will need the very best. <laughs> and the most expensive. Just get it done. And here we are, Soldier's Peak. Maker's breath. Look at the size of her. What a fortress. I told you the map would get us through the tunnels. Andrassi's blood. How did, How did you find, find that path, path on your own? own? You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Just tell me. It came to me in my dreams. Huh. When I was a lad, I tried going through the tunnel by myself. Got horribly lost. But every now and again since, I've dreamt of it. That's interesting. interesting. Why, Why didn't, didn't you mention, mention that, that before? before? I didn't want you to think I was some moon-addled simpleton. <laughs> I've me wits about me. But enough of that. I'll follow you from a distance. This place has the stench of death. I expect there's trouble up ahead. Looks like it's seen better days. Better centuries, more like. Once the Wardens flourished, their ranks full, their calibers certain. Get off my back. Now they even accept people like you, Alistair. Hey. <laughs> Done. Hmm. 
Fall back! Fall back already! Taking the peak will not be easy, my lord. I gave the Wardens one chance to die with honor. Instead, they hole up like cowards. We follow the King's advice, then. Starve them out. But the peak has months of supplies. Then we wait. When they are too weak to lift their weapons, we will send them to their final judgment. What was, what was that? Felt a bit woozy there. I'm not mad, am I? You saw it too. I've heard an Orlesian ballad about something like this. A beauty trapped in a dream. In the song, Belisa never wakes up. Your prissy friend here is making me nervous, Warden. How's this even possible? The place must truly be haunted. The world is full of mysteries. Yes, Warden. Especially when you're dead. The men's morale is low. My spells are of no use in this matter, Commander. There is more to leading men than sorcery, Averna. I will remind them that they're wardens. Men! I won't lie to you! The situation is grim. Our forces outnumbered, our bellies empty, and our hearts are sagging. But we are wardens! Darkspawn flee when they hear our horns! Archdemons die when they taste our blades. So are we to bend knee to a mere human despot? No! I, for one, will never give up! I, for one, will never surrender just to dance on Arlen's gallows! So I propose here and now, in these hallowed halls where generations of our brethren stood vigil against darkspawn and evil, 
that we send a message to that fat bastard. In this sacred place, proud men, strong men, stood defiant and would rather die than submit to tyranny. So brave, even when starving, and my great-great-grandmother stood with them. Sounds like there is greatness in your blood. Oh, well, that's kind of you to say. Generations of Drydens have said that our stock were lions. Fierce, proud, and noble. But I've gabbed enough. Lead on, my friend. Right away. Another one? Rebellion? What's this about a rebellion? If only the book weren't burned. What? But rebellion is against everything wardens stand for. But Sophia must have had her reasons. The wardens are heroes. Some injustices just can't be ignored. Perhaps we'll find more answers inside. We can only hope.
book. The History of Soldier's Peak, Chapter 2. Summon demons. Can't believe it. And my grandmother, she knew. Wardens, Wardens don't, don't forbid blood magic. Anything, anything it takes, takes to win. win. I believed that my family was better than that. But answers may lay up ahead.
spooky place. Better buff up. Step no further, Warden. This one would speak with you. Who or what are you? This one is the Dryden, Commander, Sophia. <laughs> All these things. Grandmother? You have slain many of the demon ilk to get here. This one would propose a deal. Is anything of the real Sophia left inside you? This one has tasted her memories, seen her thoughts and hidden places. But she is food for this one. No more, no less. You're not a very nice person. Levi, I'm afraid your great-great-grandmother is possessed. That or she's really let herself go. My great-great-grandmother is dead. I don't know what that is. And why, why should, should I, I trust, trust a demon? What is one woman child compared to your might? Strike me down if my terms offend. A fool this one would be to betray the warden. I've heard enough. Die, Die demon. Fool! Yes, that's me. Now second later. Let's go. Time for you to put on your good arm.
Freddy Freeze. <clears throat> later. This appears to be old research by the Mage Vernus, the detailed series of experiments in terse clinical handwriting. Day 32. The subject is not responding to the stimuli. Testing the pain threshold has uncovered nothing. Only three subjects are left. Day 82. If only I could reproduce last night's extraordinary success. Electricity is only a catalyst. The blood is the key. Day 97. Energy and blood. Repeated applications have duplicated the results. I conjecture that success can be induced alchemically. But there are no more subjects left. If only I had one more, or a dozen, the things I could do. Me. <clears throat> This is the culmination of Avernus's horrific research. I can unlock the hidden potential of the tainted blood drunk during the journey. Drink the contents. Now she won't die in 30 years. Pain wrecks your body, but there's power in this pain and a hint of understanding. Check it out. Bloodthirst. Sustain. For warrior's own tainted blood spills and sacrifice, increasing movement speed, attack speed, and critical hit chance. For as long as the mode is active, however, the warrior suffers greater damage and continually diminishing health. Cool. Blood Fury. This story sprays blood around. It's kind of stupid. Oops. Didn't mean to do that. Where are these kind of abilities? I guess I have to add them myself. I just, this is the same. 
It might be useful. I hear you. Don't disrupt my concentration. Even now, the demons seek to replenish their numbers. Are you to thank for this welcomed but temporary imbalance? The old warden mage? You still alive? Only just. I have only a short time left. Careful. This man has dabbled in matters forbidden by the Maker. He may look frail, but don't trust him. So the Maker told you that, did he? Short-sighted men have forbidden my research, not any god. <laughs> Enough. Why are you here? What is your intent? I want, I want some, some answers. answers. To what questions, <clears throat> I wonder? Ask. Sophia's great-grandson brought me here. Levi, go ahead. Master Mage, uh, sir, my family name has been worth less than dirt for over a century. Do you have any proof that Sophia was a hero? The boy who braved the mists. So you heeded my call. Ha 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 ha, and you are a Dryden. The cosmos has a sense of humor. Your call. He was but a boy when he entered the tunnels below the peak. His heart pure, his character certain. In dreams, I gave him the keys he would need. He would be my deliverance. Just answer, answer Levi's question. question. Your great-great-grandmother was the best of us. Brave, charismatic, fiery, utterly devoted to the fight. But still we lost. We fought against a tyrant, you know, so full of vigor then, so blind to consequence. But proof? There's none to be had. I'm sorry, sorry Levi. Uh, I had hoped. But thank you, Warden. How, How have you survived survive these many years? The Chantry foolishly forbids blood magic, but there are so many secrets to uncover. As my body decayed, I found ways to extend it. But that can only go so far. What was the purpose of your experiments? To stop the demonic tide, to correct the miscalculations of the past. Blood magic comes from demons. They could counter every bit of law I knew. But the darkspawn taint, that is alien to them. And it has power. What power? The Wardens use it merely to sense Darkspawn. A triviality. My research has discovered so much more. Hinted at even greater heights. This knowledge could not only save Soldier's Peak. With it, the Wardens could grow even more powerful. Persuade. You know this is wrong. It makes you no better than the demons. I have done what I must. But let me undo my greatest of mistakes. Let me cleanse this place. Then, then I will accept whatever justice you feel I merit. The time for questions is over. So be it. My only request, if justice or vengeance drive you, stay your hand until the demons are dealt with. Until, until the, the demons, demons are, are dead, dead, we're allies. That will do for now. We must go to the Great Hall. There, I will repair the damage I caused so long ago. There will be peril. 
The demons will fight us every step of the way. Come. All right, all right. New Codex, History of Soldiers P, Chapter 4. There's one other clue. Where is it? Must have missed it. Right away. Right. Off I go. Your word? We must act quickly. The demons are clawing on the gates. The veil must be closed. What, what do, do I, I do? do? I will unravel the summoning circles I drew so long ago. Waves of spirits and demons may come through. Dispatch them. I will begin. First, I must summon the magical energies. I feel them. They're coming. It's over. The veil is strong now. Stronger, at least. I said I'd submit to judgment. And so I shall. Can I be left to experiment in peace? You must atone. Research ways to help wardens. Ethically. With what time I have left, I will do this.
It may take months or years for my research to reach fruition. When it does, I will send for you. Thank you for this, Warden. You've done it, Warden. Soldier's Peak is safe again. That old geezer of Vernus deserves the gallows, if you ask me, but <laughs> people will do queer things to survive. But if he does the proper research, without the sacrifices and blood magic and all, maybe he'll turn up something good. But there was no <clears throat> proof to redeem my family. Your grandmother I'm not sure about, but you're a good man. Well, I, uh, thanks, Warden. For so long, I was focused on the past. On answers. But I think I would have been better off had I stayed at home. Enough of that, though. I find myself at a loss. You've got a whole fortress now. I suppose I should start plying my trade again. Any, Any chance, chance I could convince, convince you to stay on? You know I'm no good in a fight, but I'm a fair trader if I do say so myself. My cousins have been looking for a safe place to store trade goods, and the peak will do nicely. Whatever the Drydens have to offer are yours, for a sizable discount. Looks like we're done here. A demonic invasion thwarted, a warden base safely rescued. We do good work. Now where's that last clue? The clue that I missed. Let's go look for it.
Oh, frustrating. Oh, well, there it is. It didn't show up before. He found an old painting, one dating back to the commander of Strange Times. Perhaps a Strange History points to this. Recite the Grey Warden Ode. And there it is, the treasure. Nice. Plus three melee critical chance reduces hostility. She doesn't do melee, so be stupid to, to her. What the heck is going on? I clicked on the castle. Oh. Okay. Oh, thank the Maker. We need help. They attacked the wagon. Please help us. Follow me. I'll take you to them. Hmm. a ladder so you can get off my back. Who are you? Play a little. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Oh. 
Yeah, let's play a little bit. So you can get off my back. Ooh, ow. She's, She's kind of pretty, pretty too. Now oh. better than later. Wake, Wake him up, up and talk to him. Mmm. Oh, what? I. I would wake up dead, or not wake up at all, as the case may be. But I see you haven't killed me yet. I decided I wanted, wanted to torture you first. Oh, so you kept me around to have a bit of fun, did you? Hmm. Yep. But the purpose behind torture is usually to interrogate, yes? In that case, despite the potential for fun, perhaps I'll save you a bit of time and get right to the point. But I don't have fun. My name is Zevran. Zev to my friends. I am a member of the Antivan Crows, brought here for the sole purpose of slaying any surviving Grey Wardens, which I have failed at, sadly. What are the Antivan Crows? An order of assassins, of course, really? out of Antiva. I suppose you wouldn't hear much of them out here, but where I come from, we're rather infamous. Not for being good assassins, I see. Oh, fine. Is that what you Fereldens do? Mock your prisoners? <laughs> Such cruelty. <laughs> uh, you came, came all the way from Antiva. Not precisely. I was in the neighborhood when the offer came. The crows get around, you see. Who hired you? A rather taciturn fellow in the capital. Loghain, I think his name was. Yes, that's it. Does that mean you're loyal to Loghain? I have no idea what his issues are with you. The usual, I imagine. You threaten his power, yes? Beyond that, no, I am not loyal to him. I was contracted to perform a service. And now that you failed that service? Oh, well, that's between Loghain and the Crows, and between the Crows and myself. And between you and me? Isn't that what we're establishing now? When will you see him next? I wasn't. If I had succeeded, I would have returned home and the Crows would have informed your Loghain of the results if he didn't already know. If I had failed, I would be dead, or I should be, at least, as far as the crows are concerned. No need to see Loghain, then. If you had failed. What can I say, huh? I am an eternal optimist. Although the chances of succeeding at this point seem a bit slim, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't suppose you'd find that funny, would you? Now, how much were you paid? I wasn't paid anything. The crows, however, were paid quite handsomely, or so I understand. Which does make me about as poor as a chantry mouse, come to think of it. Being an Antivan crow isn't for the ambitious, to be perfectly honest. Then why are you one? Well, aside from a distinct lack of ambition, I suppose it's because I wasn't given much of a choice. The crows bought me young. I was a bargain, too, or so I'm led to believe. But don't let my sad story influence you. The crows aren't so bad. They keep one well supplied. Wine, women, men, whatever you happen to fancy. Though the whole severance package is garbage, let me tell you. If you're considering joining, I'd really think twice about it. Thanks, I'll take, take that under advisement. You seem like a bright girl. I'm sure you have other options. Why are you telling me all this? <laughs> Why not? I wasn't paid for silence. Not that I offered it for sale, precisely. Were you paid to talk my ear off, then? Consider it something I'm throwing in for free. As it is, if you're <laughs> done with the interrogation, I have a proposal for you, if you're of a mind. I'm listening, but make it quick. Well, here's the thing. I failed to kill you, so my life is forfeit. That's how it works. If you don't kill me, 
the crows will. Thing is, I like living. And you obviously are the sort to give the crows pause. So let me serve you instead. You must think, think I'm royally stupid. stupid. I think you're royally tough to kill and She's utterly kind of gorgeous. Dumb. Not that I think you'll respond to simple flattery, but there are worse things in life than serving the whims of a deadly sex goddess. I do. Hmm. Can I expect the same loyalty from you? I happen to be a very loyal person. Up until the point where someone expects me to die for failing. That's not a fault, really, is it? I mean, unless you are the sort who would do the same thing. In which case, I don't come very well recommended, I suppose. Why would I want your service? Why? Because I am skilled at many things, from fighting to stealth and picking locks. Oh, I really? could also warn you should the Antivan crows attempt something <clears throat> more sophisticated, now that my attempts have failed. I could also stand around and look pretty if you prefer. Warm your bed. Fend off unwanted suitors, no? No. <laughs> I like a woman who knows exactly what she wants. I really do. So, what shall it be? I'll even shine armor. You won't find a better deal, I promise. Very well. I accept your offer. Thank you, dear lady. You won't regret this. I hereby pledge my oath of loyalty to you until such a time as you choose to release me from it. I am your man, without reservation. This I swear. Click your heels together, boy. Alrighty. Let's yes. Get doing an outfit. Level them up. Duelist. That looks good. How are you here? You can use that stuff for now. Saddle belt. An elven bow. Letter. Friends of Red Jenny. Let's go. I thought I was headed back to Warden's Key. Wonder what happened. Got it. being tricky with me.
Welcome back, Warden. As you can see, we've been busy. Clean the place up a bit. Even my brother Mikhail came out of hiding. Never will you find a finer smith. Also, got some goods stored here that might interest you. Buy them now before my cousins move it all someplace else. Did you, Did you tell, tell your family, family about Sophia? I thought about it, but I figured that it's not a bad thing to believe that you come from a line of lions. Even if the truth is a touch more complicated. Our family's belief that we were wronged. It gave us strength to make something of ourselves. Any, Any trouble, trouble with the Vernus? I've not a peep from him. Seems to like keeping to himself. But I keep telling the children to stay away from the tower. <laughs> I'd, I'd like, like to, to see your wares. Certainly. You? You're the Warden? My family owes you. Any weapons I make, I will sell you for a discount. In my travels, I found a strange metal in a crater. This... This is star metal. If you give this to me, I will craft for you a thing of legend. I'd like a two-handed sword. And so it shall be. It is done. I call this blade Starfang. Pretty. May it serve you well. Sure. I must rest after my exertions. Warden. Starfang. Weakens nearby dark spawn. Dark spawn. Messy, Messy kills. Plus four damage versus the dark spawn. Increases hostility and intimidation. Plus two five stamina regeneration. Oh, well, that's ageless. This one is Starfang, plus three strength, plus two point five armor penetration, plus eight attack. Enchantment? Yes, yes indeed. indeed. Enchantment! <laughs> I keep, keep that, that for myself. myself.
58.2. Why is it less? Can't be less. It's weird. Here you go, Sin. Actually, Base Edge is probably better for him. For now. And your friends are formidable folk indeed. It's good to have you along. I'm sure. Here, look at this. Do you know what this is? That's a rose. I picked it in Lothering. I remember thinking, how could something so beautiful exist in a place with so much despair and ugliness? I probably should have left it alone, but I couldn't. The Darkspawn would come and their taint would just destroy it. So I've had it ever since. That's a nice sound. Um... I thought that I might give it to you, actually. In a lot of ways, I think the same thing when I look at you. Thank you, Alistair. That's a lovely thought. I'm glad you like it. I was just thinking, here I am doing all this complaining and you haven't exactly been having a good time of it yourself. You've had none of the good experience of being a Grey Warden since your joining. Not a word of thanks or congratulations. 
It's all been death and fighting and tragedy. I thought maybe I could say something. Tell you what a rare and wonderful thing you are to find amidst all this darkness. I feel the same way about you. I'm glad you like it. Now, if we could move right on past this awkward, embarrassing stage and get right to the steamy bits, I'd appreciate it. <laughs> and you're doing so well, too. Oh? You're lost, then. All the ladies go on and on about how suave I am. I don't know how you can resist me like you do. Oh, look, is that a cloud? I expect rain. <laughs> <laughs> this is Moonstalker, a death place for walkers, with Madeb Kuzlin, the Dragon Age Origins. Catch you on the flip side.